so so let's break down for a second uh like how what, what you're doing with heavy metal so mm-hmm. what have you been been working on there? Can you talk about it? Sure. I mean, we're in very early stages. I only started like looking for stuff like a couple months ago. Basically, just just I'm bringing in pitches for the magazine okay. and talk, talking to creators and and sort of getting going through the pitch process, which we didn't really talk about. But that's a whole different little little cat, like world of how to make a good pitch. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually helping them make their pitches really good, and then I can discuss with the rest of people at heavy metal. I I want to put this forward and put a put a you know a bug in your ear I think you should work with these people on mm-hmm. this story but I'm only going to do that when I get to the point where I really believe in that project mm-hmm. that they're pitching so we kind of work and hack it up and hone it down till it's a really tight pitch and actually by the end of that they usually have half written the thing because mm-hmm. they short stories you kind of have to pin them down anyway so I'm just in that stage of, of bringing stuff to the magazine at the moment so let's let's talk about the pitching process. Oh yeah. Let's, let's take a second and break down a pitch. Okay. Um, so I want to write a article on. Um, let's. I'll let you pick. What, what do you think we should write an article on today? Let's say, uh, House of Waxwork. So pitching for journalism. Pitching for 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 journalism, or were you talking about pitching for comics or magazine content, or what were you talking about at the time? Because there's different. Would you say yeah. it's it's different for for every form of medium? You think. Well, in comics, I think it's pretty specific in many ways. Um, comic pitching, for me, is a, is a series of pieces of information that can be presented in a, in a best way, I think, mm-hmm. which is always a very clearly communicative way where, where someone can look and spend just a few minutes looking at something and get drawn in enough that they want more. Mm-hmm. So pitching has a certain art to it um, for comics. Pitching for articles is a little bit easier in some ways, I think, because if I can find out what type of article it is, how to classify it, is it an, an opinion piece, is it an interview, is it a historical overview of some kind, like if the writer can, can articulate to me what type of article it is, what the subject matter will contain, and it's sort of what the slant or attitude toward the material is, then that'll give me enough to decide. But also based on their past work, which I will look at, mm-hmm. to see what their style is, how they usually handle material. I think for for comics journalism and as the executive editor at Comic Con, I will be quite harsh on that because I have very specific ideas of fairness and how I think material should be treated. Mm-hmm. Um, we do run negative and positive reviews on the site, but I also think that within that, everything has to be well argued mm-hmm. and well presented. So I want to see writers who who can definitely explain themselves well if they're going to say something. They're going to say, don't read this book. I I really want them to be clear why. Yeah, exactly. You You just want it to be some some reason. But if you're like, oh, this is terrible because they didn't take the time. It feels like they just copied this instead of of trying to define their own thing. Or, you know, there's a million reasons why somebody can like it. And everyone has different tastes. Sure. So it's okay for one person not to like it and have somebody else like it down the line. Yeah, actually, I love love it when I see one of my writers on the site. And a lot of them are, are, are really awesome people doing great work right now they'll actually give a very thorough review of the comic. And at the end, they'll say, I didn't really like it because it's not my thing, Mm -hmm. but I recommend it to people who like this, this, and this, because I can see that the team did a really great job on these aspects. And I'm like, that's a fair review. That's a fair review. And that's a very honest review if you're coming out and saying, hey, I don't like it. And you're like, but I think other people might. So that's, that's a really cool way to look at it. Yeah, it's good for comics because everyone always needs to hear about new stuff and Absolutely. find new things to read. For for so for comics pitching, uh, there's different standard approaches which I think work pretty well. You want to have a, a very clear title mm-hmm. already worked on that you've kind of conceptualized why that title works for the project and how it can reach people. You want to have um, a very short summary of the main kind of events mm-hmm. or plot movements, like less than a paragraph. Then you want to have a longer summary that goes more into detail in, ter- in terms of, of the beats that would happen in the mm-hmm. story, and also making sure that the characters are kind of being brought in the main characters. If you want an extended pitch, you might also have a breakdown where you have your main characters and a description for each of them, a paragraph or something like that. And importantly, you also have a biographical information about all of the creative team that you know are involved at that point. Uh, that's so the people can see the professional work that they've done, Absolutely. links, um, Really great is to have some concept sketches or art mm-hmm. that are part of the package, maybe a PDF that you've put together, and that'll help visualize the project. If it's something where it has partly been drawn, you can even include sequential pages, which is 
probably the cream of the crop because then <laughs> then the editor can see totally what it looks like. Of course, but once you can see yeah. the quality there, you're kind of like, oh, this is this is for real, as yeah. opposed to like it's just like somebody who wants something. Instead, it's like, oh, this this person I trust to like deliver it, deliver it looking good, and deliver right. it on time. The quality there, yeah. I mean, we all know that concepts are important. Like, like what is what is really the idea behind a particular story? Mm-hmm. But I I've, I've heard so many stories about books that got picked up because the art was just extraordinary. Absolutely. So seeing that mm-hmm. and letting the artist shine, you know, is important. At the same time, if it's not a project that's been picked up yet, it is hard to invest a lot of time in creating all that art. So everyone kind of decides on their own how much they are prepared to do before yeah. a book is picked up. It's interesting because, you know, there's companies like Image that were founded on that concept that was, mm-hmm. you know, that's even in the name Image. You know, you have mm-hmm. this this company that is like founded on artwork and like the the importance of the artist and and the artist's vision and the artist's creative talents it's it's really cool to kind of like see that and and see their growth like that yeah so it's cool and i think you know when when i personally write i write from a place of like theme because mm-hmm. for me it's about character it's about like what what does this protagonist want are they going to get it are they not going to get it and what's their journey and how do they grow from that mhm but do you, do you do, as an as an editor do you kind of like want to know the ending of the story from the very beginning and like or are you like okay you want to kind of ask that like do you do you want that um do you want to have to ask for like that thing or you want like mm-hmm. the 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 writer or producer or, or artist to be like oh no this is what everything is so you, I have a, well, I have a pretty specific answer to that, which is that in that first paragraph, that summary, mm-hmm. you must tell the ending, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the most important reason for that is that you're trying to sell something. Absolutely. And the person who's taking the time to read that document is probably doing it kind of as a favor. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't have to read your document. So you, you want to get that first bit of information all in one dose. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it can kind of germinate in their mind a bit. Maybe they're going about their day doing other things and they keep thinking about that arc of the story. Mm. Oh, it's a really interesting way that A got to B, you know? So you want that to stick in their mind. Ideally, you want the editor to be able to repeat back that story to someone else having read it only once or twice. And, and then it has to be really concise, right? Mm-hmm. So the ending is important to do that. If you don't include the ending, um, the company might not believe that you fully understand the project that you want to do. Absolutely. Now there is room for for expansion and for questions Mm -hmm. and the long summary that you do, the longer outline, Mm -hmm. I would say you can bring in some stuff there. You can can raise questions because when you write in a dramatic way and you want someone to be excited by something you're telling them, you want to engage them and asking questions can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Why does this character think this way? And then all of a sudden you're going to be like, why mm -hmm. do they think that way? Would it be weird if they didn't? Mm -hmm. Well, is that human, is that human nature? Is that a real world thing? And then all of a sudden you've got them like, okay, cool, I'm thinking about your project, I'm in, I'm invested in that project. Right. Well, you mentioned also being character-driven in stories, and I would say that a pitch is nothing mm-hmm. if you don't remember the importance of character, because stories are, are bought and sold on the basis of character. Absolutely. I think comics is particularly character-driven. So. But one thing that can get a little old is when your characters are too similar to other people's characters. So you want to think about that a little bit. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're clarifying who these people are and making them or, or beings and making them memorable in that pitch document. So I would include a character section. You don't have to, but I wouldn't include that for that reason. That's awesome. Character yeah. section, uh, pitch with with the whole story, a uh, little blurb, mm-hmm. so people know what it's about, the title, mm-hmm. and then uh, also the creative team. Yes, those bios are important. People, some people are so bad at self promotion, but you got to get some help if you need if you need it to make yourself presentable in a way that really shows your strengths. Now, do you yeah. think that's a lot for to get in like an email or something? If you're like, hey, I have this idea, and this, and this, and this, and this, is that too much, or do you think that's what you kind of have to do? Well, there's different situations that arise. If it's unsolicited. I would start with the title and the paragraph, and that would be what I would include, and maybe just just mention who the creative team are. If you've never met the editor and is totally like totally blind, um, if you've been invited to pitch, then I would go ahead and present that complete pitch document because it really shows off how organized you are and that you already know what this project is, and that's often very impressive, you know, to a publisher. Uh, there's the extended pitch could include a script of the first issue mm-hmm. or the first issue itself. In that case, I would hold off until you've been encouraged to, to show the rest. Yeah. So you think you think it's in, good to put the script in, or you think it's too much for the script? Like if you uh, like if you put the you know the cart before the horse, so to speak, and you're like, I have a, yeah. I have a script that's ready. <laughs> I think that if it's if you've if you're going in blind, don't submit a script at that point because 
the editor in question, their schedule is almost certainly very busy. It's actually really hard to read an entire script that's not Absolutely. part of your main workload. So you're overwhelming them a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to see this and you're going to be like, oh, another 22-page script that I have to go through and, mm -hmm. and decide if I like. And, and I have to see the blurb first. And uh, I don't really want to read this right now. I have this other project it's and hard. this other project. And, yeah. And, yeah. Even if they want to read it, they may not just be able to. Yeah. Their, their days are just too full. And they want to have lives and families as well, you know? Uh, one. I think the situation can arise where if an editor is super into, into your project and they want to, they want it to get picked up, but it hasn't been approved yet by a publisher, if that makes sense. Like an editor's interested and wants to get their company to approve a project. If you then provide things like script or, or sequential pages and the editor is cool with that, it can be good because it helps them prepare for the meeting where they're going to put the project forward. Of course. Because if someone raises a question in the meeting, they might be able to answer it because yeah. they've now walked around in that world. Like exactly. if some random out there question that wasn't initially addressed in the pitch comes up, like, how does that get to that? And the editor might be like, oh, wait, that's an issue one, and mm -hmm. this is what happens. Yeah. You know? So that's cool so, that they have the, those little details, but it's, it's a yeah. process. It's a step-by-step -step process into getting that growth to happen and getting picked up for, for these different projects. Yeah. Thank you.